friend of mine recently brought a Twitter post to my attention. I have to confess, I don't spend much time on Twitter or paying attention to Twitter. And the post itself isn't super interesting. It's basically some young teenage girl on TikTok who is bothered by an older guy hitting on her. It's a bit odd. It's awkward. It is definitely uncomfortable. And the topic itself, I don't find terribly interesting. I'm more interested in the reactions to it. And of course, predictably, the reactions to it were astonishingly uniform in the sense that you had loud calls and cries of women suggesting that, quote unquote, men need to stop doing this sort of thing. And again, it was very odd what the guy did, I have to admit, but it was directed at men and directed at the terror and horror that women experience being approached by quote-unquote creepy guys. Basically, we're talking about a quote-unquote creepy guy in this case. And I'll leave that to other people to interpret. I didn't find that very interesting per se, rather the responses. Because as always, we saw a universalizing of quote-unquote women's experience and a universalizing of quote-unquote men's experience as well, but not so much the experience, to be perfectly honest, but rather what men do, their actions. And among the tons and tons and tons, I mean tons of comments or replies on Twitter, there was one that stuck out to me, and it was a woman claiming that some other woman runs a blog where she, once a year, makes a post suggesting that the world would be fundamentally a better place if men just disappear for 24 hours. Not that any harm should come to them, but they disappeared to a different dimension, and they were just weren't there for 24 hours, for an entire day. And people responded to that, and they said in turn, well, yes, the result of that would be women being able to walk safely. And I was thinking about that, and what was glaringly obvious to me, but not to the people who were posting or replying to this, was that in theory that may kind of, sort of, somehow be true. But one thing we can definitively say, if men just disappeared collectively, every man on planet Earth for 24 hours, the global economy and the digital world as we know it would collapse and implode, among many other things. The plumbing system would implode. The very basis of civilization probably would implode. It wouldn't work. And it probably would take far longer than a single day to get everything back in order after the fact. Because these comments and these reflections are always so myopic. And one thing I've known the entirety of my life is how valuable men are, collectively speaking. Now, I'm an unimportant guy. I don't do anything important, and I don't do anything important to maintain the integrity of civilization itself. But every time... I pass by a garbage man, or somebody working a telephone pole, or even using the internet, or playing a video game, whatever it might be, I reflect almost always on how essential these people are, individually, but also collectively. I mean, these self-same people, specifically women, who are making the claim in this case that were men to disappear for an entire day, they'd be able to walk around in peace, okay, they're missing the point. The software engineers that maintain Twitter and Fakebook and all these other nifty websites, and even the internet itself, they would be gone too. Of course, there are a handful of women who do this as well, but not in sufficient numbers. And so what you're really asking for is the disappearance of society and civilization itself. Again, I'm not including myself in this. Not every man is doing something important or vital, but collectively, when we talk about the great majority of people doing these essential jobs, treating sewage, fixing toilets, maintaining the integrity of the internets, whatever. They are in large majority going to be men, and these people just don't think about that whatsoever. There are guys out there doing these really important things. It's something that women just take for granted. Do they really think if men disappeared for a single day, everything would be peachy keen? Sure, in theory, somehow, some way, I guess they could walk around in quote-unquote safety. Maybe. Debatable. But one thing we do know is that their civilization and all the things they treasure and appreciate 
their online boutiques where they buy their makeup and their clothing and all this other junk, that would at the very least function less well, and in some cases, it would cease to function. Frankly speaking, civilization needed men and still needs men, collectively speaking. I mean, the other thing this post got me to think about has been the gradual evolution of how men are perceived on the internet and social media between roughly 2000 and the current year, which is, say, 2021, and how slowly, or not so slowly, but more importantly, subtly, the perception and interpretation of men's existence change. Now, what do I mean by this? In the aughts, that is the 2000s, there was a panoply of articles, magazines, and things online suggesting that men should man up. The ubiquitous question at the time was, where had all the good men gone? And the implication behind that, frankly speaking, was that people, specifically women, were still searching for quote-unquote good men. They were searching for men. They were seeing men that they deemed insufficient or not good enough, and they were, in air quotes, imploring them to improve, imploring them to not be quote-unquote boys imploring them to be real men. And so it was different back then. And then if you were to gradually fast forward to the current year, or even the last couple of years, you'll notice a very different tone set in. It's very rare for these days women to say, where have all the good men gone? Or to encounter articles about this. It happens, but it's much rare. And the key critical difference here is invisibility. To some extent, men have always been invisible. Men, for example, doing some of the dirty jobs I mentioned, plumbing, garbage men, sewage treatment, whatever, dangerous jobs. These men are invisible. Most people don't notice them. Most women certainly don't notice them. But I'm not just talking about that degree of invisibility. I'm talking about the fact that no one is really talking about the quote-unquote crisis in boys anymore, at least not to the same degree they used to. I mean, it's still talked about here and there. But throughout the aughts and the tens, there was much more vivacious and vigorous conversation about it, suggesting at least the pretense of concern for the people involved, these boys or these men allegedly coming from the mainstream and allegedly coming from women. But now, we don't see that. Now we see something quite different, or we don't, rather. It's the invisibility factor. It seems as if the internet and social media extension, some element of society, has just collectively given up on the idea of quote-unquote improving or getting men to be adequate. Nobody's imploring anymore. Nobody's suggesting that these men can be improved upon because they just don't exist anymore. And it's very telling because I think one thing the hyper-sexualized, hyper-streamified economy and existence online has done has been to make a lot of young men in particular dependent on social contacts online and these are the types that don't even register on the radars of most women, young or otherwise, other than them donating money to online streamers who happen to be female. And as for the other guys, women themselves have been caught up in a whirlwind of social media that has led to their own distorted perceptions of what constitutes the average guy and what constitutes the not average guy and what's obtainable and what's not. And as more and more men are drifting into the online scene exclusively, taking only breaks occasionally to eat, drink, and take dumps, and they're young, we're going to see more and more of these guys. A generation, not just raised online, but living and breathing the online existence, and the guys that are only partially online or somewhat older, they don't cut the mustard for a lot of females these days, most females these days. 
And so as we're at the early stages of a new decade, we can make possible observations of what's to come. I think as more and more people, men specifically, decide to spend most of their existence online, the younger guys especially, men as a collective group will become more and more invisible. And I don't just mean guys going about their business, doing the jobs that they have decided to do. I mean, they won't even be on the radar. They will not be addressed. They won't come up in conversation. They simply won't be around. Men have always to some degree been invisible, but the invisibility is that much stronger now. And we're going to see more and more of the sorts of articles that we heard about a year or two ago about how it's men's faults that they're too poor to impress women. Encapsulated in the quip, men are broke, and this brokenness is hurting women. So it's not an exhortation of where have all the good men gone? How do we fix our boys? How do we get them back in order? It's just over in the eyes of the mainstream for the youngest generation, largely, especially the ones spending all their time online for understandable reasons. That's a topic for another day, though. And to the extent they're mentioned at all, it's simply the harm they do rather than what can be quote-unquote fixed. So the 2020s, I suspect, are going to be a lot less vocal when it comes to male-female relations, a lot less vocal than the 10s were, a lot less vocal than the aughts were. And what we're really going to see is a silent, invisible, quiet demise of a sort as many, many men slip into obscurity and perhaps, unfortunately, in some cases into oblivion without so much as the world batting an eyelash. But on a final note, there is a positive, a silver lining in this ever-growing cloud. Being invisible does afford you, in theory, maximal freedom, which is to say there's no finger pointing at you anymore saying you need to do this, you need to follow this path. That might happen occasionally if you're in a certain familial situation. But broadly speaking, at this stage, no one is even pretending to care about what men want in the first place. So you might as well just do what you want anyway because you're not going to suffer any real social repercussions and you don't collide with the social media powers that be in the sense of political correctness, etc., etc. So that is the one silver lining, a kind of freedom that is won or gained from being absolutely invisible and absolutely not on the radar of anybody, which some people might lament, but it's one way you can look at this in a positive fashion. As always, thank you for tuning in. Please share the video. Please like the video. Hit the sub button if you've never done so. Please hit the bell icon to be informed of forthcoming videos because YouTube never notifies people. And if I'm still alive, hale, and healthy, I'll check you out later. May the gods watch over you. Bye-bye. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.